Welcome back. And for Africa to eradicate poverty and reduce unemployment, complex issues such as infrastructure needs to be addressed. That's according to the chairman, Hayes Holdings, Mr. Tony Lumelu. Mr. Lumelu, who spoke to VOA Channel's TV business correspondent in New York, Jill Maladrino, on the sideline of the just concluded Africa Investor Forum, uh, the Nasdaq Exchange called for more diversification and massive investment in critical sectors like power. Tony, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank now you. that the continent is moving away from commodity dependency, what sectors do you see growth in? Uh, uh, thanks so much for this opportunity. Africa is, um, has been very highly dependent on commodities. Mm -hmm. And now that the commodity price is not doing well, we need to diversify our economies. We need to begin to address those complex issues that uh, oftentimes we attend to with uh, simple solutions. Mm -hmm. And what are these complex issues? Infrastructure. Infrastructure is key. For us to eradicate poverty in Africa, for us to address issues of unemployment. And uh, that was um, Tony Elumelu, Chairman Hayes Holdings. Well, the European Union's new 44 billion euro Africa fund aims to entice private investors to some of the world's poorest nations and slow mass migration to Europe. The fund unveiled last week by European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker could be up and running by mid-2017 and is based on a similar larger fund for Europe already operating. According to the EU Development Commissioner, the fund's focus should be on the most fragile countries, particularly in the semi-arid Sahel region where climate change, poverty and natural disasters are driving millions of people north to Europe's shores. After two years of traveling through Africa in many of our partner countries, I really noticed that, that we can go beyond the traditional uh, development projects in order to really activate or to mobilize the, 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 the economic uh, and social potentials of the, and the ownership and the, and the self-reliance of, 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 of our uh, partners in, in Africa. This is an investment fund we, where we would like to uh, have a new investments in a countries where primarily fragile, uh, conflict-affected uh, countries, uh, risky uh, markets where the investments would not uh, come without such an such a, uh, uh, investment scheme. So this means for me to, 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 to target primarily the, 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 the Sahel uh, region and, and, and the whole this Central African part from, from the west to the east. Uh, coast uh, of Africa and in the, in the, in the European neighborhood, especially in the North Africa and the Middle East. In Rwanda, I saw so nicely arranged uh, terraces for, for agriculture uh, production of uh, wheat, beans, uh, coffee, uh, tea. But, but the next step is missing. Uh, the, 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 the processing of the, of, the, of the coffee beans, processing of the, uh, of the, of the, of the tea leaves. Uh, this is where I see that, that the private sector uh, investments could chip in in order to add additional value to, to the, to the uh, production chains in Africa. Let's now cross over to Nigeria's debt market. Choma Udu, fixed income dealer at um, GT Bank, joins me now. Good afternoon, Choma. Hi, good afternoon. So how's the yields um, trading today? Um, the market is uh, mixed trading, actually, on the first end of the call, as um, CBN announces a normal auction on two maturities. We've seen a bearish buyer, a buyer as traders commence sale of the assets recently purchased. Um, last week at yield of about 17, because of the expectations we have that then the OMO auctions will come out at 18 levels. Uh, there was a Treasury bill auction yesterday. What was the outcome? Um, the Treasury bill auctions, we saw the 
one eighty two days and the one year bill lose some points, sixty and twenty seven basis points respectively. The ninety one days um bill closed at fourteen maintained. And what is your outlook going forward? Our outlook is for OMO option we um we hope to see that the CDN continues to take out assets at eighteen levels and then um we continue to see them up take out the liquidity in the system in their bid to let interest rate be where it, is, where it is right now. All right, thank you very much for your time, Chioma. All right, bye. We'll move on now to um, Ghana, uh, where Ghana, of course, is set to become the fourth biggest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa by 2020, once two new offshore fields come on stream to push total output above 240,000 barrels per day. A report released yesterday by Pan-African Bank Ecobank says the West African country produces around 103,000 barrels per day, ranking it ninth, far behind leaders Nigeria and Angola, which produce an average of 1.867 million barrels per day and 1.754 million barrels per day each. Ghana TN field came on stream in August and is expected to increase output to a peak of around 80,000 barrels per day. The Jubilee field, which started producing oil in 2010 and is operated by British oil company Tulo, could bounce back to production of around 115,000 barrels per day once it um, solves um, uh, technical problems within its production vessel. Uh, the International Monetary Fund expects Namibia's economic growth to slow to 2.5% this year after expanding by 5.3% in 2015 as a decline in construction activity weighs. The IMF said in a statement after a team led a mission to Namibia that the Southern African nation's growth is expected to pick up to about 5% in 2017 as mines ramp up production. And in Zimbabwe, many Zimbabweans are finding it increasingly difficult to live in a country where widespread cash shortages, high unemployment and delays in public sector salaries continue. Zimbabwe's economy is flattening while the budget deficit is balancing, pointing to a worsening of financial difficulties. Making ends meet has become a daunting task for Masai Mapanguri in recent years. The former civil servant who lives in Harare, Zimbabwe, says life has become too expensive in the country and that there just isn't enough money coming in to help pay the bills. Zimbabwe used to be known as the breadbasket of Africa. So for somebody feeding a family of four, like in my case, uh, it's, it's very difficult, you know, to... to, to have two meals, three meals, is a, it's a luxury one can afford. So people feel so much let down, so much betrayed. I think something has to be done uh, sooner or later. Zimbabwe's economy is slowing while the budget deficit is ballooning. The finance minister, Patrick Tinamasa, reported last week pointing to a worsening of financial difficulties. He also cut his growth forecast for this year to just 1.2% from 1.4. Between January and June, Zimbabwe spent 96.8% of its revenue on government employee salaries, although Robert Mugabe's cabinet has agreed to slash the wage bill by $118 million by the end of this year. Such cuts, alongside other economic reforms, are part of demands by international lenders before resuming any financial support to Harare. The government of Zimbabwe is spending up to 97% of its revenue on the wage bill. That leaves 3% for you know, capital projects and in investment into infrastructure and other um, sectors of the economy, which are crucial for economic growth. So there is absolutely no option. Uh, there is a, a very urgent need to reform uh, the civil service, to reduce government expenditure, and to allow for spending on infrastructure as, as a source of economic growth. The government says the budget deficit was on track to top $1 billion this year, more than six times the initial projection, as tax and mineral revenues dropped and public sector spending snowballed. The Zimbabwean economy is slowly sliding into recession. 
uh, in the honeymoon that we saw between 2009 and 2012 is over. The, after 2012, the economy flatlined, but as we speak, there is a real risk that we are sliding into into recession. The, uh, you know, the government has projected a 1.2 percent. GDP growth in 2016. Widespread cash shortages, unemployment above 80 percent and delays in payment of public sector salaries are already stoking rare protests against President Mugabe. The program continues after the break. Do stay with us.